The Idaho Student Murders Four University of Idaho students were discovered stabbed to death on November the 13th last year. They were found dead in the off-campus home where three of the victims lived in Moscow, Idaho. They had been brutally stabbed to death. The victims are identified as Ethan Chapin, age 20, of Conway, Washington, Madison Mogan, 21, of Kerr Dallin, Idaho, Zana Canodal, 20, of Avondale, Arizona, and Kaylee Gonzalez, 21, of Rathdrum, Idaho. On November the 15th, 2022, Moscow Police Department issues a statement saying an edged weapon, such as a knife, was used in the killings. At this juncture, no weapon has been found. On November the 16th, the Moscow Police Department holds a press conference about the murders. Police Chief James Fry say that it was a targeted attack. We do not have a suspect at this time, and that individual is still out there. On November the 17th, 2022, the latter county coroner's office reports the victims were likely asleep when they were stabbed with a large knife. Some even had defensive wounds. On November the 18th, police release an aerial map showing the times and locations where the victims were on the night of November the 12th, 2022, and in the early hours of November the 13th. Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan were at the corner club between 10pm and 1.30am, and then headed to a food truck at 1.40am. Ethan Chapin and Zana Kenodal attended a Sigma Chi party between 8 to 9 p.m. and were home at 1.45 a.m. On November the 19th, investigators say they do not believe the driver who brought two of the victims, Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan, home on the night of the murders, is involved in the crime. 20th of November, Detectives say they do not believe the surviving roommates or friends visiting the house at the time of the murders are involved. 22nd of November, investigators looked extensively at information received about one of the victims, Kaylee Gonzalez, having a stalker. They have not been able to verify or identify a stalker. 25th of November, at, by this date, investigators had collected 113 pieces of physical evidence and sent it to the Idaho State Police Crime Lab. Idaho Governor Brad Little has directed up to $1 million in funds for the ongoing investigation. On the 30th of November, the University of Idaho holds a vigil in honour of the murdered students. The most important message that we have for you and your families is to spend as much time as possible with those people. Stacy Chapin, the mother of victim Ethan Chapin, tells those who gathered. 7th of December, police announced they are interested in speaking with the driver of a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra spotted near the crime scene at the time of the murders. December 15th, a trooper's body cam captures a white Hyundai Elantra being stopped twice in Indiana for driving violations. The driver is 28-year-old Brian Koberger, who is accompanied by his father. They were driving home from Washington State University for winter break to the family's home in Pennsylvania. December the 18th, surveillance footage emerges of victims Kaylee Gonzalez and Madison Mogan hours before the killings, walking through downtown discussing a man named Adam. December 20th, investigators speak to an owner of a Hyundai Elantra located in Eugene, Oregon. The vehicle was involved in a collision and was impounded. The owner is believed to not have any connection to Moscow, Idaho. December 26th to 29th, it is reported that an FBI team surveils Adam, the man whom two of the victims discussed the night they were murdered, for a few days. December the 30th, 
Police announced Brian Koberger's arrest in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, for the murders of the University of Idaho students. He is being charged with burglary and four counts of first-degree murder. Koberger was a PhD student at Washington State University, which is located roughly eight miles from the murder scene in Moscow, Idaho. Law enforcement say they were able to use forensic analysis to connect Koberger to the crime scene. January the 3rd, at a hearing in Pennsylvania, Koberger waives his extradition to Moscow, Idaho. 4th of January, Koberger is brought to Idaho. The judge issues a gag order, which prohibits officials and others involved in the case from speaking about it. January the 5th, public officials release an affidavit in the case against Brian Koberger. Among the findings, a witness claimed she saw a figure of 5 foot 10 or taller, male, not very muscular, dressed in black clothing and a mask on the night of the murders. She said the masked figure walked towards the black sliding glass door and she locked herself in her room. The DNA found on the button snap of a leather knife sheath at the crime scene appears to be a strong match with the DNA found in the trash at the Coburger family residence in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. Investigators believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. Coburger applied for an internship with the Pullman Police Department, and in his application essay, he said he had an interest in assisting in rural law enforcement agencies to better collect and analyse technological data. Investigators checked the movements of Coburger's phone, and it stops reporting a signal at 2.47 a.m., and appears to turn back on again at 4.48 a.m. This means the phone may have been in an area without cell coverage or the phone was turned off. Thus, the murder suspect in this brutal murder is Brian Koberger. But who is he? And what is the information that we have about him tell us about what he might well be? Well, let's look at some basic information about him before I get into the meat of analysing him and what he might be. Koberger, who is originally from eastern Pennsylvania, was studying criminal justice at Washington State University and was allegedly hiding out at his parents' home after the killings. The police affidavit revealed that last fall Koberger applied for an internship with the Pullman Police Department. In his application essay, He said he was interested in helping police more efficiently collect and analyse technological data in public safety operations. He attended Pleasant Valley High School in Broadheadsville, Pennsylvania, where he graduated in 2013. Photos from his high school yearbook show he made a stark physical transformation from sophomore to senior years and allegedly aspired to be an army ranger. Koberger appears to have worked in the Pleasantville, Pleasant Valley School District as a casual security officer as recently as August 2021, according to Board of Education meeting minutes. The suspect has roots in a Keystone State going back at least 2013, when he registered as a libertarian in Albrightsville, public records show he did not appear to have a criminal record. He has two sisters, including one that works as a marriage and family therapist in New Jersey. Koberger graduated from DeSalas University in Allentown with a bachelor's degree in 2020 and Master of Arts in Criminal Justice in June 2022, according to a commencement programme. DeSalas University issued a statement in response to Koberger's arrest as a Catholic Salesian community. We are devastated by this senseless tragedy. The statement says, Our thoughts and prayers are with the victim's families during this difficult time. He then went on to become a PhD student at the Department of Criminal Justice and Criminology, according to the WSU website. Koberger had completed his first semester, which ended shortly after the killings before his arrest. Koberger had allegedly been working as a teacher's assistant prior to his arrest and lived in on-campus student and family housing in WSU Steptoe Village. On behalf of the W.S. Pullman community, I want to offer my sincere thanks to all the law enforcement agencies that have been working tirelessly to solve this crime, said Elizabeth Chilton, Chancellor of the W.S.U. Pullman Campus and W.S.U. Provost. This horrific act has shaken everyone. 
Investigators from the Idaho State Police, WSU Police, were joined by Latar County Prosecutor Bill Thompson for the execution of a search warrant inside Coburger's second-story apartment. Investigators also searched his WSU Pullman office. Bare details about him so far. But I will be investigating more about his background, who his parents are, what is known about his interests and behaviours, what is known about the allegations against him so far with regard to the act of murder. This will help us create a picture of what Brian Koberger is for the purpose of determining precisely what is governing his behaviours and, on the basis that it is proven that he has murdered these individuals, what drove him to do it. Join me, H.G. Tudor, as I continue to examine the information and evidence in this case to determine what Brian Koberger is. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.